How about we begin with a very quick audience poll? Tall versus short. Which do you think is better? Okay, now all those who think being tall is better, raise your hands and don't worry, I won't judge you. Okay. Okay, now all those who think being short is better, raise your hands. Interesting. Well, I hope that all of you are being honest. But whatever we really may believe, all of us can agree that we can do little to change our height. Yet for many of us, it is something that determines our destiny. Have you ever come across strange research studies that talk about how height correlates to leadership skills, bank balance, career growth, and even lifespan? Well, many parents obsess over how many inches their children are growing. Like many other children, I have also felt that my own worth is being measured with a height rod. You see, I'm in the seventh grade, but I'm already very familiar with Gregor Mendel's experiments. If you don't know who I'm talking about, Gregor Mendel was an Austrian monk who crossed pea plants to study the inheritance of physical characteristics from one generation to another. In my own home, I've heard my parents apply Mendel's genetic principles to fret over my expected height. Science, of course, has been enriched by Mendel's experiments. They laid the foundations of genetics. But Mendel's gene maths didn't quite work for me. You see, everyone in my extended family had touched five feet by the age of 12. But despite my tall appearance, I only managed to reach four feet seven inches. Well, I mean, I must have just given the expression to a long, hidden, recessive gene in the family, right? But that wasn't a satisfactory explanation for my parents. They went on a wild goose chase to find a doctor who could diagnose my stubborn defiance of their version of Mendel's principles. I mean, it wouldn't be accurate to say they went Mendel. So after several investigations, my growth was suspected to be constitutionally delayed. Since then, I have been subjected to a relentless battery of tests. I was also put on a rather unexciting diet to make up for any possible poor nutrition. Mom, Dad, <laughs> I'm sorry to announce this on TEDx, but I did secretly bin some of the lunches you packed. As you possibly suspected, but hey, I mean, I did try my best. But all you parents out there, you have to understand this. Eating is no longer a simple pleasure for many of us children. They're guilt trips packed in colorful lunch boxes. So whenever I refused an extra slice of bland boiled egg, I was warned about a lifetime of regret about being short and malnutrition. So after a few months of this, I was sad and tired. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and set about researching the truth of society's general anxiety about height. I drafted my cousin as my research assistant. After convincing her, she had a stake in the outcome. And then the myths began to tumble one by one. The first was the false assumption that high achievers are always giants among men and women. Throughout history, there were many short men and women who were towering leaders. If you're looking for warriors, Alexander the Great, Napoleon Bonaparte, Joan of Arc, Rani Lakshmi Bai were all vertically challenged. And if you're looking for leaders in the modern era, Angela Merkel, Margaret Thatcher, Nicholas Sarkozy, Yasser Arafat, Nikita Khrushchev were all rather on the small side, just name a few. And in the world of showbiz, petite stars are plenty. Kylie Minogue, Dolly Parton, Danny DeVito, Nicki Minaj, Anna Kendrick, and Ariana Grande, who famously tweeted, I love being hashtag fun-sized. So as I widened my research, I found a very interesting study conducted in Sardinia. You see, in this island, the tallest people live for about two years less than their shorter neighbors. Yet another study of 1.3 million people in Spain showed that every extra centimeter added to your height 
deducted 0.7 years from the total expected lifespan. Scientists say that the bigger you are, the more cells you have in your body, increasing the risk of mutations, which could cause illnesses. So basically, to put it in simple terms, a bigger body has far more toxins. Furthermore, if you really think about it, tall people have a larger carbon footprint than short people. Tall people produce far more waste than us and increase pollution rates. Tall peop short people are also more agile. We can rotate our bodies better and with more grace than tall people. Tall people are typically also so coaches compared to us. The speed of their nerve transmission lags behind shorter people by less than a second, which means shorter people react to things faster. Tall people typically also have a larger body mass index than our shorties, so they're more likely to be injured in accidents. So you know, I'd recommend you watch your step, dollies. But jokes aside, let me be clear that I'm not trying to put tall people down. I don't believe in a world where people are constantly being compared with others, nor am I suffering the so-called Tinkerbell syndrome, the ridiculous idea that smaller girls develop a larger-than-life personality to compensate for lack of size. And if you're wondering, I'm also not trying to start a short distribution from a TEDx stage. The point is, you can consider your life to be an advantage or a disadvantage, but it all depends on how you look at it. Physical characteristics are never limitations to success or greatness. As for people like Stephen Hawking, Helen Keller, Franklin Roosevelt, and Stevie Wonder have proven, it doesn't matter what card you've been given in life. It is your inner strength that enables you to reach great heights. The loftiness of your dreams determines your success not your physique. It is important that our society changes its assumptions about height and the advantages that it gives to us. We have to demolish this wrong belief that height is a sign of ability or quality. It is only by challenging established norms and prejudices that we all can evolve and progress. Besides, as a very wise man once put it, we don't value the sun for its height, but for its light. Thank you.